Welcome back to Monroe Live. I'm Carl and I wanted to go ahead and take you through some of the things that we do here at Monroe and how that may actually relate to some things that you've seen in some classic cars and some other vehicles. Now the reason why I wanted to do this is because I am a fan of classic cars. I own a few myself. I restore them myself. Now when we tear down a vehicle here at Monroe, as you've heard Sandy say, we look at every single stamping, every single weldment. Well, for me, when I tear down one of my classic cars, I honestly do the same thing. Everything that I take apart, I have photographs of on white sheets of paper. I have everything cataloged because what I'm doing, I want to be a record for the future so that people can re restore these cars then. However, even though I'm a fan of classic cars, I know that they have issues. I know that they are not safe. And in today's video, I actually wanted to address some of that. Now, there is a video which was done by the Insurance Institute of Highway Safety of a crash test between a 59 Bel Air and a 2009 Malibu. Being part of the classic car community, I, I see all of the people who try and say that that video was fake. And I would like to address some of their specifics and why a modern car is much safer than what you would see in a classic car. So there are a few very specific points that I would like to make mention of. One, they argue that, oh, GM admitted that they removed the engine and transmission from that vehicle. GM did not do the crash test at all. It was the Insurance Institute of Highway Safety. And I reached out to them and they gave me this photo showing that engine and transmission is still in the car. That car is on display in the lobby at IHS and we were able to visit it on one of our trips two years ago to their facility. All right. The whole front of that car, you see how it shifts to the side. There is a camera angle from the passenger side and you see that fender just fly forward. People have the argument, oh, they removed the fender bolts on that whole front end. They compromised it. No, look at this photo. I also have a GM X-Ring vehicle. This is my own fender. See that tab? That tab is the bolt location for the top of that fender. That tab sheared right through. And here is a photo from the actual vehicle at IHS. And you can see how that bolt ripped right through that tab. That car or the GM X-Frame is unique because there is a radiator core support at the front of the frame. Then there is the body. That body is mounted with a body mount. The radiator core support is mounted with a body mount. The inner fenders attach to the top of the core support and then to the body then the outer fenders hang on top of that. Everything in between is floating. There is no structure like you see here on the Kia EV9 or any of these vehicles in line. Those fenders are completely floating. So when everyone says, oh, they removed brackets, I can tell you having torn one of those cars apart myself, there are no brackets. There are no supporting structural components in there that's actually protecting you during a crash. Okay, now then there's the argument, well, those classic cars, those are just made of heavier, thicker steel. Are you really sure about that? I'm like, okay, it is true that it is a body on frame, similar to the F-150 here. We have a frame, we have a body on the frame. But on that X-frame or on those classic vehicles, all of this structure is missing. There is no internal structure. Those fenders are floating, the inner fender is floating. It's all hollow cavities. Now, even though this one is basically a hybrid unibody, you'll see that same sort of structure that exists on this F-150. But let's look at a component from one of those classic cars. This is a 1961 door panel from one of my cars. All right, there are basically two pieces of metal, an outer skin and an inner skin. But look inside, there is nothing in there. This is a big hollow panel, there is no structure. And then you'll make the argument, well, it doesn't need it because this is thicker metal. Okay, there are different ways of measuring the thickness of metal. You'll talk about how many thou is it or what gauge is the metal. But to make something a little easier for us and any who may be working in different systems, let's just stick to metric. I measured this panel is 0.9 millimeters thick. 
This EV9 door is 0.8 millimeters thick on the outside. Oh, that 0.1 millimeter makes such a big difference. But look inside this door. You see that intru anti-intrusion beam. Basically, this door has its own roll cage and other stamped components that reinforce it. The truth about the metal, about that old classic car metal, is though in instances it may be thicker, it is also weaker because it is a softer, more ductile metal. I can easily work that with a hammer and a dolly and reshape that metal. If I dent this, I can do dent, uh, paintless dent repair and pop it right back out because this metal has a better memory than this metal. Okay, well those classic cars, they were real steel and these are all just plastic. Okay, here's a plastic door panel. It's quite heavy, has multi-component assembly, has structure and air in it. What did the classic car have? Here is a classic car door panel. It has style. I will completely agree to that. Much more style. But this is made of cardboard, literally cardboard. So if I'm trying to say that this is providing more safety within a vehicle, no. I can do more things with that cardboard. I can make more and unique shapes as long as they're flat. I can add different types of sewing, different types of cover stock to provide it because style, but that is just cardboard. I don't like that argument saying, well, plastic is bad, plastic is bad. Which would you rather have? That plastic that has at least some structure to it, has more style, I can design depth, I can design shape, or the classic car, cardboard. Now, don't get me wrong, I love my classic cars. I really, really do. However, I need to be honest about what they are. I know what they are. I know that I'm taking my life in my own hands when I'm driving one of them but I enjoy the style. I enjoy the effort. It's more important to me to restore the car than it is to drive the car. I like that effort, but I have so many people who are my classic car friends who feel like they're stuck in the past. As Sandy would say, they're Luddites. And where does the term Luddite come from? Those people who were fighting against the manufacturing method of looms and textiles, which I think is kind of funny. So it actually came from the fabric and the interiors, but a light it is a person who thinks that all advancement is a negative towards society. This advancement is not a negative. This is all a positive, but you'll notice between these three vehicles, they all do it in a slightly different way. We are always refining, we are always tuning. There is no one right way, but we are far past where we were in the past. So I look forward to the future. That is where I want to be. In the classic car community, there's still a lot of people who complain and say, oh, leaded gas was so much better. We need R12 Freon, it works so much better. Well, those materials were toxic and harmful for the environment. A person who was involved in the development of both leaded gasoline and R12 Freon was Charles Kettering. Charles Kettering also had the quote, my thoughts are on the future because I'm going to spend the rest of my life there. What we know now about leaded gasoline and R12 Freon, we don't use it anymore. And even though my classic car friends will argue and say it's superior, they prefer it, they want to go back to it, I would challenge them and say, I bet that Charles Kettering, the man who was involved in developing them, would also be against them today and would want to look forward. And what do we do here at Monroe? We review all this stuff and we see the ways we are moving things forward. And we try and help people in that aspect. So thank you very much for watching this silly little video, but I hope you've gained something out of it and I hope that it has helped you and also given you a little bit of ammunition to your crazy uncle who argues that those classic cars are better.